What up, guys? Welcome to a brand new episode of Stand Up Sit Down. On today's show, I have the hilarious Thomas Frazier. Stay tuned. You are now tuned in to Black Hollywood Lives. Stand up, sit down. There you go. Yeah. Ah, there you go. That song is fresh. Here's the thing. <laughs> I haven't oh seen anybody raise God. the roof since like 96. Listen, <laughs> you need to hang around more grown people, okay? <laughs> I like to have fun, man. This you can the raise the roof, thing. you can... <laughs> Come on, man. I'm not young, man. I'm 35 years old. Let's get oh it in. Oh my God, that's so funny. I don't know why it's so funny, but it's just so funny. Because like this is like what my mom does when she feels like she's being cool. You know? Your mom like, is cool, that's why. My, listen, my mom What's was What's your mom, Nick? Huh? That, what you trying to say about your mom? I'm saying that she's fine, but she's also from like a different era. You know? I know. See, I don't have that ageism thing, and it, I never had it. And that's why I've always been weird because I do not care. As long as you're having fun, why point it out? Why? Right. Everybody no, having right. fun, let's move. You know what I'm saying? It's a good time. I had a kid a year ago. Yeah. I'm it, living hell, life, it's man. been a year. It's been a year, man. Jesus. My kid is, uh, as they say, 13 and a half months. Yeah, don't I just like say don't, a year. Yeah, don't be that parent year. that says, "Oh, he's like 116 months." Like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I don't understand. <laughs> that. Seven or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so you know, let's get into it, Thomas. I haven't, I literally haven't seen you. It's been a minute. I, I, I want to say it was before you had the kid. Definitely, it is, was at the. I, I, I can tell you where it is. If, if I'm not mistaken, it was at the Chinese Theater on Hollywood. Is that where I, I saw done, you last? Yeah, I think so. I did a show with. I think Tony Baker was on that show. It was the all all deaf digital show, right? Yep. Oh, was, yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Drew Tillman, yo. They put on a great, Dude, great show. Drew Tillman, definitely shout out. Like I, I not totally, but I want to model my life after that dude. That dude is like yeah. a real person. No, he's. And fantastic. I don't even see him that often. Like he, he probably doesn't even, <laughs> he, he probably knows me in passing. But like he, you can tell. There's certain people who post on Facebook and you can tell like, all right, you're just posting all the good stuff. But it's like some people post inspiring stuff, real stuff. Like right. that's one of those dudes. Yeah. And he doesn't even post that often. Right. No, he's, but he's I'm, a I'm paying great, attention to everything. Great guy, has a cute kid, yep. you know? I mean, so, and so they put on a phenomenal show Wednesday nights. Uh, if you're in the Hollywood area, in the Definitely. LA area, you know, you need something to do. Nine o'clock, I want to say, is that right? Nine, that's, nine o'clock. That's all the grind Chinese, times. Chinese, Chinese nine theater. or ten, and all all the good shows start at nine or ten. Right. You know, it's a rough show when it starts at seven. Wow. I'm just saying. I mean, but are you, are you, you talking live? You're talking like television? No, live. Okay. Yeah, live shows that start at seven aren't as good as the ones that start at nine or ten. Just an opinion, guys. I mean, just but okay, but but then like, if you have like a like a like a big concert, like like Drake's concert started. Or like, or doors open at six thirty. Drake walks in at ten. Okay, <laughs> if the show starts at six thirty, Drake walks in at ten. Trust well, I mean, me. Yeah, I mean, you know, because you have the what opening concert act have you been you know, to? And it started at seven, and then the act was like, "Yeah, seven oh one, here I am." No, no, they make you wait. They, you got to stand. Nah, see, but that's why I want to change the game. So, like, if I'm like, "Yo, the show starts at 8, you better be in your seats at 8.06 because I'm I'm coming out at 8.07. You can't change the game of the lazy America we live in, okay? People don't even show up until 9. Well, people will be <laughs> upset, man. Be, I'll be ending, ending my show and then they'll be walking in like, listen, hope you got the parking validated because uh, <laughs> the show's over. I learned that a long time ago, man. You can't, people show up late. That's what they do. So if you want them to show up at 7, you tell them the show's going to start at 6. But with okay. concert, it works. It works. Right. Well, yeah. Cause I'm have, talking about comedy open. shows. Comedy shows that start at seven, it's a gamble. I'm not even gonna say it's bad. It's a gamble. That's true. That's true. So you know, let all right, let's let's go all the way back to let's go all the way back. Thomas, mm -hmm. young Thomas, growing up. What because so so you you were born in California. Yes, I was born in Santa Monica. Uh, I checked recently, researched. Hospital's not there anymore. Wow. Um, but I, yeah, I was born there to uh, a mom and a father um, who were not together. Mm. Um, interestingly enough, um, yeah, born there, raised there till I was three, and then my mom shipped me, uh, just like an Amazon package, to. <laughs> Wait, so she didn't go with you? She did not. She, she was an actress you. out here who was really trying to be an actress. Okay. And she was like, you know what? 
let me ship my boy back to my grandma. By the way, but did did like someone like come out here and then fly back with you? Or like you were just a three year old on a plane by yourself? I doubt you can be three on the plane by yourself. I'm pretty sure my grandmother came out here and probably okay. brought me back to uh, right, to right, Baltimore. Okay. okay. And so I was raised by them for I would say the next four years while she while she stayed out here and tried to do you know the acting thing. Right. And um, then she met another dude. Um, who she had sex with, and had my brother. <laughs> and then she took my brother uh, to Baltimore. Okay. And then we all lived there under the same roof with my grandmother. So um, so she like quit acting, and like I'm living in Baltimore now. Yes, or acting quit her. However you want to look at it. Right. Uh, I'm just joking. But no, it's it's uh, yeah. She she basically realized like all right, I have two different kids, two different fathers. The fathers, so I hear at the time, were not interested in helping with the children. Uh, so she, uh, so she was just a, a single, a single mom. She did it on her own. But right. there's so much. I mean, we don't have enough time for all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I haven't even figured out how to even uh, express this. But to just be honest about it, like, right. um, you know, you, you could think of it as a little careless. Well, however you want to think of it, life happened. She had two kids, two different fathers, um, and then yeah, I was I was raised. Primarily for 17 years in, in Baltimore, Maryland. What was that like? Uh, have you seen The Wire? Yes. There it Just is. Just like that? Yeah. I mean, they. what, what happened with, with, with my parents is they tried to, at least, you know, my grandmother, aunt and uncle, they tried to keep me out of that environment. Mm. And they did. Even though I lived there, I pretty much lived in my house. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. There's a famous Chris Rock joke where he says, like, the space that you get to, to play in just beca- keeps becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> like, like, at first, it's like, all right, y'all can play from, from this gate to that gate. Now you can play from this gate to that gate. Then, you, then after a while, you just hop in a circle. That was the joke. It's like, that's how I felt. I literally lived in my home, and that's it. Wow. Because there's so much... There's so much violence. There's so much drugs. There's so much happening out on the street. Yeah. And it's a gamble. Yeah. We all make a gamble when we, when we walk out our front door. Yeah. But in Baltimore, it's even a bigger gamble because of the area I lived in. Let's right. say I live near uh, Drew Hill Park, right around the corner from a. Even to this day, a really hard neighborhood. Um, the street is called White Lock. Mm. It's rough. I mean, it's it's rough around there. So they tried to keep me inside. I can remember one time I was outside playing around. My mom was like, "Go inside." I was almost never allowed to to go outside. Right. Uh. So I'm like, "Ah, oh, man, why?" I go inside, and one of my mom's friends is like, yeah, there was a dude out there with a gun you didn't see. I'm wow. like, wow. Yeah. Like, oh, my goodness. So even though in my brain as I get older, I'm like, man, I wish I had been allowed to do more things. Um, I'm but still, you I'm still also, alive. Right. You, I'm still you alive. could have gone down a totally different path. I'm not been. hooked on crack, right. even, though, <laughs> even though I have all the symptoms. <laughs> I'm telling everybody, I sweat like a banshee. So if you see yeah. me sweat, wipe myself, I'm not on the Hollywood crack and cocaine, okay? I just sweat, and the, li- the lights are bright. I apologize. This is not police interrogation. All the questions are super friendly. I promise. People always question it. People are like, you okay? <laughs> you, uh, I got some coke in my car. Right? <laughs> I don't do coke, man. I just sweat. I'm sorry. I got big pores. Well, you know, I mean, and, and I also feel that you're also not famous enough yet to really do coke. So, so, so don't, mm. you know, like. You don't know the price of Coke then. Until you. <laughs> <laughs> the price of Coke is dropped. I'm Has not saying I know. I'm just saying. No, I mean, because it, it, it's, it's definitely like a hot, because like crack is like, uh, but like cocaine is like a Hollywood, like What's high the? end. I mean, like, crack is like, you know, crack, like, you're saying, because like the, the, the difference be- between like a crackhead and a cokehead, I feel like is more than a couple tax brackets. Like, it, like it's. Mm. I don't know, man. No, is it? Am I? I mean, because if I'm if I'm wrong, let me know. But I would say it's all bad. I mean, crack and cocaine are no, bad. No, I mean it's all bad. Yeah, yeah, like it's all it's it's terrible. But I, yeah. I just I, I feel think that, that's the that perception. Uh, I think that's the perception that people who make more money would have you do. You've been watching too many Whitney Houston <laughs> interviews. <laughs> you you believe to a crack is whack. Right. Listen, okay, it's all the same. Crack is cocaine. It is. Okay, so what are we talking about? Right. <laughs> like it's it's rough all the way around. It doesn't matter who you are. Right. So so speaking of speaking of crack, what introduced you into comedy? What introduced me into comedy? Okay, so I was a very nerdy dude growing up. Mm. Um didn't have the smooth moves. Uh, with, without a, it's funny. 
without a father, there's a lot of things that you're missing, but you don't know until later. Right. Um, so what introduced me to comedy, first I got into acting. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I was acting in a, a uh, excuse me, community theater. I was doing that. I, I really took a hold to it. I really understood the emotions. I could really do it well. People were like, oh man, this guy is, is great. So right. I'm like, cool. All right, so then I auditioned for um, a, high, a arts high school, the Baltimore School for the Arts. Tupac Shakur went there, alumni, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. Those are the top people I could think of, but research it. Trust me, there's mm -hmm. a lot of us out there uh, doing our thing. Brisha Webb is right. holding it down right now. Uh, I loved her. When I was a senior, she was a freshman, and I could tell back then, like, this is a cool chick. Like, she, yeah, she, she, was, she, she knows what's going on, yeah. yeah. Um, She's on the um, new Marlon Wayne show now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and my homie Diallo Riddle. Let me holler out everybody. Like these people are are making it happen. But anyway, um, I I started there with theater and like you got to come up with tricks of the trade if you can't get women. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're. And right. something happened where it's like if I can make you laugh. That's a beautiful thing. Like for some, it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. Something happened where, at first, I was super corny and all my jokes were corny. Right. And then I started getting into the heart of comedy, and the first thing that really hit me was Chris Rock's 1996 "Bring the Pain." Mm. That's the first stand-up special I watched that I gelled with immediately because I had been watching Comic View. But that was like the truth. Yeah, I can remember. There's only one joke in that entire special that's semi corny. Mm. Everything else in that special is like, yeah. <laughs> who is yeah. this dude? Like right. he he really hit it hard. So that's what started making me think about stand up. But as far as comedy, it was more used used as a way to fit in amongst people and to get women. Yeah, but I didn't really get women with it. Mm. I got laughs, but I didn't get the girl. You know what I'm saying? Like gotcha. it was, it was just that's that's kind of what what started me into it. I'm like, oh, oh, that's what I need to do. Right. And so I wasn't like, that funny in, in in middle school. As I worked on my funny, oh, that, <laughs> oh, I was a banger. What? But what was that feel like? Was it like satisfaction? Was it a was it a state of euphoria? when you're able to say something that made someone laugh? Like, like what was that feeling that you got? I can tell you the first time I made people laugh in a group was in middle school. I want to say eighth grade, right before high school. There's this guy with like sideshow bob hair. He was really short. Mm. And people would go into me, man. They would go in and I would always smile like, hey, yeah, this is good. This is very funny. <laughs> and, then I, and then eventually I'm like, oh, you got to come back. Yeah. First few times I came back, wasn't funny, bombed. Um, but then one time I looked at him and I was like, man, looked at him real hard. I'm like, you know what? This dude looks like an upside down dick. <laughs> and as a as a middle schooler, that was one of the funniest jokes. Yeah, that was ever. that was the that when was the... I said that and the whole room of at least thirty kids bursted up. I was like, excuse <laughs> me, <laughs> like, let me go home and write some things down and come right. back. Right. So I used to do goofy stuff, man. I used to fall over chairs on purpose just to mm. get attention. Right. Because nobody's paying the skinny kid who has the weird mom attention. So you were that kid. Yeah, my mom would come and and the only reason she was weird is because she's an actress and no one knows her. So uh -huh. when she comes and says she's an actress, they're like, "What you been in?" Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't seen you in nothing. Like, okay, please calm down. Like, so I would do certain things just to get a little bit of attention. I mean, that's mm. that's that's kind of where it started. Um, and that feeling, like you say, man, that's like there is euphoria. It's, it's yeah. like using drugs. It's like drinking or something. It's like. There's there's nothing like it, and we right. keep chasing it. I, I mean, I've been chasing it ever since then. Yeah, I've learned as an older person to calm down, but it's like that's that feeling where people understand you, and you don't really. I mean, the equation is there. One plus one always equals two. Like right. that, that feels great. So now, would you fall over a chair now for would attention? You? Would you fall over a chair now? No, 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 I would, no. <laughs> no, no, I'm, this is why I'm not famous now, because like, You're there's a lot of things, those chairs. yeah, there's not, there's, exactly, that, that's, no, that's you know is. what, I'm, I'm not effing around with you, man, that is what it is, you really have to put a star on yourself to get as far as you want to go, yeah. I'm more organic with it, 
I love when I'm hanging out with you or friends or my son or my wife and something happens and I can put it on stage that night mm. and people can go, oh, I understand that. Right. Like, I like that relief. I like right. being their visual drug, right. if, if you will. Like, that's 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 what I like. That's oh, nice, their visual drug. It's yeah, no, nah, it's, it's true because not everybody uses drugs, but if you think of other things as drugs, if you think of... A lot of us love comedy. We watch comedy right. specials. We listen to podcasts. Like that's our drug. That's what keeps us going in yeah. this animalistic world. I'm not going to get to, you know. So, what was the first like official stand-up show like? Mm. When you were like, "All right, I'm really going to try this stand-up thing." Wow. What was that first show like? I got spoiled. Okay, so I went to the comedy store, and I was older. Mm. This is after. I've been acting for a while. I came out here and I did a sketch comedy group. We did well. We got signed by like HBO and AOL to do online stuff. Right. Yeah, we were doing great. Um, and then when that broke up, I didn't want to be a part of a group again because I was like, I can't be a part of another group that breaks up. Right. That's not, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, and I, was, I had always been interested in stand up in the back of my brain. And I'm like, oh, you know what? Let me just try it. So yeah. I go to the comedy store, I sign up. I want to say the first time I signed up, I got on, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but you get three minutes. Okay. Wait, so, so, so this was the open mic? Yes. Okay. And this was like, I'm like 27, 28 years old at this time. Okay. Uh, so I've been out here for a while, I'm doing my thing, and I'm like, you know what? I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna sit down. So I sat down, I wrote my first few bits quick. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like 10 minutes. <laughs> I put it on stage, and I, I murdered. Like. I got laughs all the way through. And I was like, wow. At, a, at an open mic, though. Yes. Yeah, but those are the hardest people to make laugh. This is true. When comedians who are in it, who have seen it all the time, yeah. who are there every week to hear bad jokes, good jokes, right. they ain't really trying to laugh at you. <laughs> right. So if you're actually funny and they laugh, you're, you're like, oh. You got something. Wow. You got something. Yeah. And as yeah. I come back, people say, oh, I love that joke. That's like validation. That makes me feel. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I got spoiled. My first time was great. Okay, so then what? What was like the first show like? Whether it was like actual people there, and you know, you're like, okay, like you get five minutes or. It was great it was. too because of, because I I come from an acting and writing background. Um, I was polished, but I knew how to make it look like I was just thinking of that stuff right there. Mm. That, that that was my key. It's like, I think it's important to write. I know a lot of people say that they don't write, and, you know, God bless you. I've seen some of the best improvers. <laughs> some of the best improvers, man, they get on stage. You have to write. If you really want someone who came to your show, who spent $15 on a ticket, yeah. possibly $50, $50 on drinks, parking was a problem. Right. The gas they spent to get there. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. I'm thinking about real people that come to your show. Because it's like $100. When you put it on yes. like it, it's like $100. Yes. Yeah. And, and some, for some BS jokes? No. <laughs> nah. Nah. Right. So I had my stuff set up. Mm. And I and people laugh at you, but I was in the mirror, and I, I'm trying to give people a show. Yeah. Because I understand what it takes. I've, I've seen comedy shows before. I know what I spent. Yeah. So, yeah, the first show went well. It, it, it was the same kind of thing. Because in Los Angeles, you only get a certain amount of time. Yeah. Five to ten minutes. Yeah. So five minutes. I had some polished material. I had a. I, I had a closing joke. That's yeah. what Chris Rock told me, or not told me, but he taught me, by watching his specials. Specials great. Always a closing joke. Yeah. Always something, a curtain call, something that people are going to go. Ah, your best joke right. should go at the end. Yeah. That's just how you should finish it. Why not? Yeah. I mean, do well in the middle, but I'm saying I, my, my best joke, which I, it's sad to say, still to this day, I feel like it's my best joke is my punch joke. I, <laughs> I, 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 fin I finished with that joke as much as possible because uh, most of the joke. people in the audience have not seen this joke. And yeah. it's like, I want to hit them yeah. and I want to hit them hard. And it's just the, it's because I've seen the, the joke multiple times and <laughs> it's a great act out. And you because it was like not every comedian really commits to an act out because like some yeah. try and do a little bit but there's just certain people who can really do act outs and or may have a few jokes that that they do really well that mm -hmm. are on the floor you know this and that and so like your commitment 
to that joke and just to just the act out of that joke is what makes that Thank such you. a such a banger. I appreciate it, man. No, that's great. Not, I, I, it's funny. When I walk down the street, people are like, hey, you the punch joke guy. I don't know my name. <laughs> like, oh, I, I saw you. Right. That's how I knew it was, it was a good joke. Like if I, uh, when I have a special, that's going to end the, uh, the special for sure. Maybe Just you should maybe homage. you should open with that and then end with some something else stronger. That's what Paul Mooney's son told me, who looks older than Paul Mooney. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, have you seen Paul Mooney's sons? I know I haven't. Look no. up Paul Mooney's sons. Paul Mooney's sons to this day look, look older than, older Paul than really? their father. Wow. <laughs> and they don't look bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that that's what's funny. But I remember yeah. him seeing me once. He said, Hey. You should open with that joke. <laughs> it's like because then it'll force you to even have another joke even stronger behind it. It's true. Yeah. 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 I I uh, I have been seeking for a joke that I find funnier than that. Maybe it's, it's nostalgia, but well, no. I mean, I I, I definitely get it. And, and like by the time when the special comes around, you'll you'll have something else. Oh yeah. Well, no, know? I have a thousand jokes now. Right. I mean, but you'll have something that's like okay, like I can now put the punch joke up front. And I could end with this. Maybe I don't know. Killer. I don't know. No, you have that. One. That one feels like a curtain call. It no, feels no. so perfect. I know. Even if I come with a better one, maybe I'd open up with that one. I don't know. But but the way comedy specials are going now, man, it's rough. I don't know about you, but it's rough for me to even watch them. I don't know how people's brains work now. Right. You know, I've seen. I'm not even gonna mention any names, but I've seen people on stage that I was like, that dude is phenomenal. Yeah. And then I saw his special, and I was like. What happened? <laughs> like, how? These were the jokes you wanted well, to put on tape? Yeah, I, but yeah. I don't know. They have bigger houses than me. They probably have more money than me. So I, I don't want to judge. Right. I don't know what happens in between there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sell your product. But as far as me, Mr. Judge and Comedian, I'm watching this and I'm like, man, for some reason, live, it works way better. Yeah. But that's just me. Well, I mean, you know, because like, like there, there are, are some specials that water down probably the essence of of the joke, but then you have you have guys like who I just really started watching him uh, was Sebastian Maniscalco. Oh, yeah. he like. but he's been destroying since day one, right? And so, <laughs> but, but I, I didn't I didn't know who he was, right? And then I watched the episode of Comedians and Cars getting coffee, and I was like, Yo, this this dude's funny. And then coincidentally, uh, in between seasons at work, so because he had a he had a pilot, mm -hmm. and I I walked by the room that that was doing his his table read, and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, there's Vanessa L L Lachey, and then there's Tony Danza. And I was like, who is this? Who is this guy? Who's Sebastian? <laughs> I was like, who, who who has who has a TV show? Who's this Sebastian Dude, guy? That's how much information is out there right now. We right. don't even know people. We're like, who are you? Right. He's like, I've been around for twenty years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then when I finally like did some actual digging, and then like started watching his special, and like, started watching his, his like stand up, I was like, yo, this dude is hilarious. Yeah, man. Like he's a fun, and so like like he's a guy that I haven't seen live yet, but like I know like you know when I really start hitting the, the scene again and going out, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch him. I'm like yo, this dude is hilarious. Yeah. But I think that his jokes live and his jokes on screen transfer over. Oh okay. I I I, I will admit I have not seen the specials yet. Watch this. I heard they're pretty good. I was crying. And it, like it takes a lot for me to like physically cry okay, be, because of it. laughter. I gotta watch it. Yeah. I was, I was. He, I've been hearing his he name more me. often. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's. I've seen him live, but I'm saying I'm hearing his more name, his, right. his name more often in like circles. Yeah. Like I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. he's getting out there. I had no idea who he was, but he's, like, he's been, he's been crushing for a while. Yeah. Like a while. Yeah, there's a lot of people like that, man. The, yeah. The, one of the guys who I don't know if he, he didn't win the last one, the second to last, uh, last comic standing. <sighs> I forgot his name. Horrible, but. I didn't know he was. He's been around for twenty years, yeah. and he was murdering. Yeah, like he just, brrr, like he just <laughs> walked in a place. And everybody was dead. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, yeah. and and he told very simple jokes, mm. but the way he crafted them, you yeah. were like, right. "Yes, yeah." I wish I remember can remember his name. It's horrible. Yeah. Well, see, like, and that's like it's the simplicity of the and because it's it's great to have such a complex joke. Because of it just being so funny and, and having to be like multi layered and this and that, like that's great. Yeah. But you and I both know that audiences today cannot digest a complex joke in a short amount of time. So simple jokes that are funny that they get, that's what gets them like, oh my God, this guy's super hilarious. Yeah, most people are working people. They want to just laugh. They right. don't, you know, they're not trying to think too much, but 
I would say be yourself and see what happens because there are some complex jokes that work. Yep. It's just about trying it out, working it out with everything. With everything is that way. That's Practice true. makes perfect, period. What about the times they don't work? So let's talk about your first bomb. What? <laughs> yeah, let's 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 uh, pull that skeleton out of the out of the closet. Woo! What was that like? Take us through that experience. Let's bow our heads. <laughs> um, so the first time I can remember bombing was on my birthday. Oh man! And I don't really blame myself. It was just I don't even know if I bombed. I just know the feeling was horrible. Yeah. Because it was my first. I want to say. Mm, I want to say I hadn't been doing it in a year, or I had been. It was around the year, mm. and it was my birthday show. I booked a show on my birthday. Yeah, right? and I'm like, hey man, we do everybody we come out. Great, right? I decided I don't know why to wear a suit. Oh my god! I was like, let me put on a suit, <laughs> suede jacket. Let me do my thing. Yeah, <laughs> come out. Uh, Long story short, halfway through, the people that came out to see me were like, "We have to go." Wow! Because the show, they, you know, it was back when they booked so many comedians on a show. Mm -hmm. You're like, "When am I gonna go?" Right. When am I gonna go, guys? Right. I've been here for two days. Yeah. I need to wash my drawers. Right. <laughs> right. Why am I still here? Right. Another birthday has come. Like it was. It was so long. There were so many comedians. I remember, and it wasn't his fault. Um. Guy from Mad TV came in and did Bobby a set. Lee? No, uh, white dude, uh, receding hairline. Very funny though. Ike Baron, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I forgot I'm his name, but to I'm gonna forget everybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> when this comes online, I'm gonna comment with everybody's name. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, him. Uh, he comes in. He does a set. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're dragging me on. The people that came to see me have left. There are seven people left in the audience. Okay, I'm there for like four hours. I'm like, by the time I got on stage, I'm like, hey guys, I tell my jokes. And of course, when there's a room full of seven people and you're not that confident about your jokes, people are not gonna laugh, man. Right. So yeah, I mean, I, I didn't polish the story up as I usually do, but that's that was the first time I can remember thinking like, oh damn, like. But like bombing in front of seven people, like isn't that bad? Yeah, you know, like versus like seventy or like seven hundred. Like when it's like seven, it's kind of like all right, you're at a at a friend's party or something. You know, you you, you said something yeah. that didn't really hit. You're like okay. See, I can't say I've never bombed, but I can say I've never bombed ungracefully, if that's a word. Like I just even when I first started out, if people weren't laughing, I got them somewhere. Mm. So I didn't really consider it a bomb. Like when I left, people still talked to me afterwards. That's good. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure I have bombed and, and didn't know, or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because people are still cool afterwards. I'm right. like, oh, really? Yeah, I can't, I can't. But that was, that's when I felt like I bombed, to be honest. Like, okay. even though there were some people and they were rocking with it, I still felt like, man. So wait, so you've, you've never like, You've never gotten no laughs at all. I've never had a full set Just with no silence. laughs. Just silence. You've never but had I don't silence. know what people think of as bombing out there. I'm sure comedians are like, man, fuck that nigga. But like, <laughs> but like that's, I've never had a full set where nobody laughed. I, that's, you know that's what? nice. That's you know good. what? That's you know good. what? Forget about that. I have had a set where the second half didn't go well. And I'll tell you when it was. It was the first time my current wife, <laughs> my current wife, like I had another one, my wife, she came to a show when I had only been doing it maybe less than a year. Uh -huh. She came to a show. Naeem Lin was on the show. That was okay. the first time I met him. Guy Tory was on the show. Okay. Nika Williams was on the show. Wow. Um, I come in, my first two jokes, mm. murdering them. Nice. So I was like, yeah. Right. <laughs> I was, Annie, you okay? Like, right. let's do it. Right. <laughs> then the, ne the all the rest of the jokes, where where was it? it? I forget. It was in it was near here. It was in North Hollywood at some cafe, but they had turned it into a show. Okay. So they had packed the place. Right. I I had only really had three minutes of strong material from that comedy show. Oh, from man. from that comedy store. And I kept right. doing it everywhere. And I would add in little jokes here and there, but you afraid, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. That was the one where I was like, <gasps> or when I left, Nick Williams was like, You gotta work on them punchlines. <laughs> <laughs> But what about the first two, three jokes? That, that went well. Do you have that on camera? <laughs> because I was just like, 
but yeah, the, the next four minutes, you're right. That that was a show that I could say I bombed. Wow. And my yeah, wife is so cool. When I left, she was like, "Oh, who cares?" You know what right. I'm saying? Like, this is just what it is. Like, yeah. but 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 did it hurt you more that she was there to witness? It did, and it also hurt me that I wasn't prepared enough. But mm -hmm. I hadn't been doing comedy long enough. Right. See, I saw Na Naeem Lynn get up there, and he had some stuff people laughed at, but he had some stuff that people didn't laugh at, too. Mm. But it never phased his... Uh, confidence. His right. confidence, his right. aura, nothing. Right. You know, you could look at him like he bombed, but he didn't because he had a thousand jokes ready. Yeah. You didn't laugh at that one? Here's another one. Right. You didn't laugh at that one? Here's another one. Right. You want to take a nap? Wait. <laughs> when you wake up, I'm having another one for you. Yeah. Like that's the kind of thing that kind of, when you're on stage, there is a huge thing about confidence. Yeah, this is what I want to instill in my kid. Uh, not, not not just confidence, but a toughness, because I notice you know you could be as smart as you want to be, you may not get the girl, you may not get the house, you may not have that much money, but I notice in the most uh, successful or strongest of people. There is a toughness and a motor. Right. There is a, a listen, I, I know who I am. I know what I will do. I know what I won't do. I know what I will talk about. I know what I won't talk about. Right. So it's like there's something, there's this aura around you that even when you bomb, you didn't really bomb. And that's one thing I got to tell people out there. You see a comedian once, you don't know that comedian. Yeah, that's true. You do not know that comedian. You, if you see him once and he bombs, you do not know that comedian. See him 75 times. That's what, what will tell you what's actually happening with that comedian. Yeah. Because some people, oh, I saw him, he wasn't funny. Listen, this is a long haul. This is a straight up marathon. Yeah. Like you cannot look at somebody once and, and tell who they are. Right. Look at their whole portfolio. Trust me, you're going to find more funny people um, that, that you thought were whack than, than not. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and, and, but that's also a part of the 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 building process, especially doing comedy. Like, not every joke is gonna hit, and no, you know, you may tell a joke once and it doesn't hit, and then okay, let me go back and retool it, mm -hmm. so you know, and then you tell that same joke slightly differently than the next time. You get a little laughs, retool it again, tell the same joke slightly differently the next time, and then you know, like okay, we got yeah. some something here, but that person who saw you mess up the first time, like okay, well he's not. Yeah, and what's the name? Uh, like I said, Chris Rock. He had a joke. I forget which one. If it, one of his jokes on on Bring the Pain, he said, "Oh, the the nigga joke, mm. the joke about how there's niggas and there's black people." He said that bombed damn near a thousand <laughs> times. Yeah, because people are like, well, "Excuse me." Right. But after a while, when you listen, honesty, man, you can't you can't beat honesty. Yeah. I mean, you could you could shun it, you could ignore it. But it's there. Yeah. And that joke is one of the greatest jokes I've ever heard in my entire life. And he's not even saying anything that hasn't been said in a barbershop before. He's just, right. he's the one that was able to craft it, mold it, bring it to everybody. Yeah. You enjoying this gin, brother? This is, no, this is, this is, uh, this is uh, fantastic. Mm. So, are there any is jokes? Is this tangeray? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, there, are there any jokes that you have? That or are there any jokes that you would consider to be off limits from you know shows or like jokes that you that you wrote like you know this would be funny but I can't say it because I don't want to touch that subject. There's some nasty jokes that like your average audience just aren't gonna like. Mm. Like I wasn't into nasty humor either before I expanded my my comedy view. Do you know what I'm saying? But like for the most part, most audiences do not want to hear about what goes on in the bathroom. Right. And they want to hear about what goes on in the bedroom, but in a certain way. Right. Like, it's kind of cool to, and I know it's horrible because Cosby has, has <laughs> but I, I, I would always say Cosby it. Not drug a girl, but I'm saying make it so that everyone can hear it. If a baby was in the room, mm -hmm. that's like the best kind of comedy to me. When you don't have to curse, yeah. when you don't have to use nasty humor, sometimes it just comes off and it's kind of cool and it, it works. Right. But you you do when you when you hear it too much, it kind of it kind of affects the joke. Right. So yeah, I would say extreme nasty humor. Okay. I would stay away from political humor unless I had a really good joke. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like. Well, and that's also so timely though. Is that you know you can maybe hit yeah. it for like a couple of weeks and then. Yeah, that's true. You know. But I mean, yeah, I mean things have been going. 
the the Democratic and Republican struggle has been going on for a while now. So I think yeah. people would get it. It's just like I was at a fair today. I was at the Taste of Encino. Shout out to Kevin Hart. He was there. Um, I was at the Taste of Encino. Just walking around. Or he I was I was walking around because for three years I've lived in Encino. Don't try to find me. But I, love, I, I, love, I for, for three years, I've lived in Encino, and I, I always wanted to go. Uh. So we, let's, let's go. So we go. Uh, it was all right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're walking through, and we saw a Democratic, um, you know, banner, uh, st you know, one of those uh, st stations. Uh. So we walk by it. We walk past it again. There's this woman arguing with this guy. She's like, you this and you that. And blah, blah, blah. How could you vote for Trump? He, he, do you have a mother? Do you have a daughter? Right. Do you have any female cousins? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Like that kind of stuff for some reason, people just snap. Like yeah. people just, but yeah. I'm not that kind of person, man. I can, I can hear jokes I don't agree with and laugh at them because why are you taking this seriously? Right. This is not even a serious thing. I am literally here to make you laugh and to take you out of your, you know, your daily grind. That's right. it. I, I I had to Snapchat it, actually. <laughs> I was just like, what is she doing? Like, you think you're going to change his mind? Like, yeah. what? And then she started using, I'm going to say what she said, not saying I, I use these words. She called him a faggot. She said, you bald headed. Your argument is done when you start using them words. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even on your side anymore. I'm gonna do. I'm on the dude that's voting for Trump's <laughs> side. Like, how do you? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, people are people on Facebook too much, man. We need to get outside. Like, yeah. what are yeah. we doing? He's not going to be president. I'm going to say this right now. He's not going to be president. The news boasts the people that are the loudest Trump supporters out there. Right? right? That's what happens. Do you look around, man? Look around. Look. If you at the club this weekend, right? I want you to pay the DJ $10 to stop the music. Then ask everybody in the room, <laughs> who is voting for Hillary, <laughs> okay? If you don't get 90% of the crowd raising their hand, you're I the will wrong give you money, you're okay? Right. Then you're, and you're at the wrong club. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because what? Are you, what? Yeah. I'm telling you Hillary's going to win by a landslide. I'm not, I'm not convinced that Hillary didn't pay him to run because <laughs> what's happening right now? Like, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, without getting too much into it, there's, there's, I don't, there's just a lot of, a lot of stuff that has yeah. happened over the last seventy-two hours that you're just like, wow, like it's this the is, show, man. This it's is the show. Yeah, yeah. Like the it's, winner. It's, let me tell you something. The winner was already decided a long time ago. Yeah. We watching the show, bro. Yeah. We are watching the show, and it's very entertaining. Well, yeah, that's that's but that's the point. Hillary, it's, Hillary was going to be first of all. <laughs> Paul Moy had a great joke. He's like, Hillary will be president of the United States for the third time. Like, <laughs> there's there's no way that that's not going to weave our... Now, the only thing Donald Trump did do was, I think, eventually, we're going to do away with the politician that is static, that has rehearsed things. Right. I think people will be speaking more freely in the future. I mean, and as as they should, because I feel like you want to see like the heart of the politician. Well, yeah, and the internet's out there, you know, and but, nothing yeah. you do is sacred anymore. So right. everything you do is out there. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna get. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah, that's very that's very true. Uh, would you apologize for a joke? Like if someone got offended, or if a group of people got offended about a joke that you had, would you apologize? If I was wrong, but I think for the most part, no. Like it doesn't make any sense. I'd rather have a conversation with that person than to apologize. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't say anything on stage that I don't think is either true or funny. And again, you can't take everything people say, especially comedians on stage, as truth. We're just trying to make you laugh. Right. So I don't, I don't fully understand the apology, but I also don't have a million dollars in the bank. Right. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, I feel like to preserve my million dollars, yeah, uh, yeah. Miss, Miss Keith, on I, I apologize. No, a but lot of a I lot of those. I don't think I would. Yeah, it's it's just to you know keep your show on television or to keep your endorsements and to keep this and keep that. You know, a lot of it's like your PR, your agents, like hey man, you got yeah, it's uh, that. And uh, it's also you're a human and you feel certain things. And right. if you say something about rape and somebody has been raped in the audience, but at the same time, man, 
that's another thing you know I understand people staying away from that because it's like it's a trigger right like you know I, I've heard people say Chris I ain't funny he cursed too much oh man come on take out the curses I can listen to anybody yeah I can listen to my enemy talk there are people that I listen to that I'm not that much of a fan of but I can take that 5% of, of the 100% of stuff they spew right. and go oh that's the truth yeah do you know what I'm saying like, like, oh, that's hilarious yeah I just have that box like yeah. I just have that different kind of box where you can put something in and I can spit out what I want to spit out and listen to what I what I want to listen to like I just don't but I've never had a joke that I've had to apologize about it's good. you know what I'm saying like I've I've told jokes, people go, Ugh, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I'll try to tweak it so I don't get that again. Because I do I do love the coast. I gotta be honest. Yeah. Like I love the polished like stuff I've done before, make it look new that night. Right. And the whole time it's like right. Who are you? I love that feel. I love that feel. Oh yeah, yeah. You when, when you have just those that rolling laughter and your laughs yeah. per per minute, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, but you gotta you gotta break it up. Because yeah. even you know, being 10 at the whole time is not that great, to be honest with you. Right. Like, you know, it does feel good, but if you're doing it often enough, you get bored with it. Right. So you want to throw a shot in here. You want to throw a shot in there. You want to see what's well, going to happen. It's it's also like, like if you're at a 10, it's nice to kind of throw something in that makes them go like, oh. Like that, to me, I don't know what it is, but like I'll, I'll throw in something nasty or something that they're like, you know that's disgusting, but you still think it's funny, right. and you don't want to laugh because you don't want to be like that a person who thinks that th that it's funny yeah, yeah. in public. But you know they're like, okay, I was that's actually true. kind of fun. That, that the the build up is what is what is, like you said the work really the work is is where you start to craft things and build things and see what's going to happen. I mean yeah. that's what the people that really make it. I feel like they have to go through the bombing yeah. and the 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 nights where it's just not working right. like you you have to go through the trenches like the army man you gotta you gotta be all you can be <laughs> where, wherever you're going to be that so yeah. you gotta bomb one night you gotta be good another night nasty jokes here just work it in and then figure out who you are right. and that's what's gonna kind of make you shine because I've, I've been thinking about this for a while man there are people who have been doing this for a long time yeah and they have no health insurance and no money Right. So what's what's pushing them? You got to figure out what what's really going to work for you. Right. And if you ain't in it for the long haul, yeah, you got to. You you have to put out as much of your thoughts as possible and then craft them. Yeah. Craft them. Craft them and then eventually you're going to come up with with a dinner people everybody wants to eat. Yeah. And and but today is more niche. I noticed that. Right. Today is more like, well, I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to find my audience. And look, more probably more power to everybody who does that. Yeah, well, and then when you find your own audience, then I feel like those people stick with you longer because they're like, okay, like I, I, I like Thomas because he does these these jokes, and he find like he gets me, you know, and yep. like and I can just rock with with Thomas. And you get people who you know follow you everywhere and you mm -hmm. know support you and this and that and yada yada. I don't think he caused me to, you know, like, 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 like they'll yes. they'll rock with you. I was at the comedy you. store once, main room, mm -hmm. and I was doing my my spiel. And I usually don't acknowledge drunk people in the audience because they're assholes. Right. So I was like, but that night for some reason, I had got on this drunk dude so hard. In my brain, I thought, oh, I gotta reconcile with him. So I started high-fiving him. And my wife after the show was like, why did you do that? Like, why did you veer from who you usually are? Like, right. you, you got him and right. you got the audience. So why right. did you feel like you had to reconcile with him? It made a, a point in the show that was weird. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Like, why did I get self-conscious at that point in time? Right. It's because I don't like to ride on people. Mm. People people love to ride. Some people do. <sighs> yeah. Some. Yeah. <laughs> Most people, when they think they ride, oh, 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 they, they don't even know. Right. They, if, if, right. I had a let, oh, if I had to take my gloves off, I'd have slapped that bitch. Like, that's how people are, especially when they're correct. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I like to come together and say, hey, man, you were wrong. Would you like some milk? <laughs> I I like to show people they were wrong or have a discussion, but I don't understand why we have to stomp people's heads unless they are 
getting just combative out there. and this and that. And yeah, that, right, right. Unless they're too out there, and then right. it's like, okay, you know what? No. Yeah, yeah. You, Let you, me you, put you in your place. And yeah, then, but yeah. most for me, I like love, man. I like I like being in, in around people. And I like being honest, and I like. Um, that's the simplest way I can put it, man. I like yep. love. I like being in a space where people are accepting of each other, even with different points of view. That's good. That's because good. that's that's what comedy is for me, man. It's, it's straight up honesty. Right. That's why it's funny, because the real world is not honest. The real Freaking. world, when they say fake it till you make it, oh my God, I should have listened to that. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> that is like everywhere you go. Social you, media, man. Not even social media. People can't even be honest. Yeah. Because... I don't know if, if it's insecurity or what it is, but like, this is why I'm I'm by myself a lot, man. Like, I don't I don't like being in big groups because big groups judge. Big groups are like, what kind of car are you driving? What are you doing? Yeah. Oh no, I right, who is? It's yeah. it's all yeah. it's all bullshit. Yeah. Uh, quickly before we wrap up, so you're a father now. Yes. You've been a father for a year now. I have. Has that changed the way you do comedy? Has that changed the way you write jokes? You know, because you're like, okay, like my kid's gonna grow up and like there's see this. There's more jokes because of him, but it hasn't mm-hmm. changed the way I do I do comedy. Okay. It has changed the way I watch movies, though. Yeah, like I just saw Deep Water Horizon, mm. and I was deep water uh, crying. I, I cried like five times in that movie. Is it that like? It's, <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it is it that sad? Like it's? I don't know about you. I I, I have an emotional side. I was in there like, I had. <laughs> Me and my wife had to go see a double feature uh, because the first movie, we were lost. <laughs> we left the movie theater. My, my, my wife looked at me. She said, why did you take me here? <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, my God. We, we went to go see Magnificent Seven mm-hmm. just so that we could come down from this movie. But, yeah, you look at things through a different lens with a kid. Mm-hmm. So when I hear, you know, um, when I hear about a kid dying or when I hear about someone dying, I think about, oh my God, what if I die? What if I wasn't here for my kid? What if I right. wasn't around for my son? Yeah. That w- becoming a parent has definitely made me look at things differently. Definitely. Uh, because I'm always thinking about him. Right. I mean, I didn't have a father growing up. So like for me, it's all about him. Yeah. You know, F comedy, F everything I ever tried to do. As long as he's good, I'm good. Right. That's what it's more about. And for me, you know, in honestly, my comedy has suffered because of him. But I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because being around for him is more interesting than me being on stage. I love being on stage. But as long as he's good, I'm good. And and that's, you know, I I want to break that cycle. I want to break, you know, cuz my father he um I I saw him a few times. We, you know, I went I went to go visit him in where he lived. Um you know, it, it was cool, but it was like he died when I was 17 mm-hmm. and I was supposed to move out here to California with him so I could get to know him better and understand this business and blah, blah, blah. I hadn't really been around him much. Mm-hmm. And he died right before I got a chance to do that. That's so great. for me, it's like, well, what if I would have died when he turned seven? I want to give him as much information, as much stuff as possible right. before that happens. So I love the stage. I love my craft. I'll never stop working at it. But that's the dude right now. Yeah. Period. That's good. That's good. Uh, what was probably the biggest thing that you've learned in your career thus far doing comedy? Man. Or that's... acting and improv and stand-up. Like, what, what has been the biggest lesson that you've learned? Um, ownership is key. I have about... Can't even keep track now, but like five or six short films that I've shot on my own, that I shot, directed, wrote, mm. produced, put on, casted. Um, one of my films is called Voicemail. It's mm. my first film. Got into the NBC uh, Short Film Fest as one of seven finalists of thousands. Yeah. Uh, the lead actress who's in that is now on Luke Cage right now. Her name is Simone Missick. Love you, Simone. Um, that's what I realized is that I need to take ownership of my work for me to be happy. Right. There's nothing wrong with being a tool. We, you know, you might be a strong hammer, but unless somebody picks you up to hit a nail, you're just a hammer laying there. Right. I like to be the orchestrator of that. I like to be the mechanic. I like to I, I like to go, hey, I want this here, and I know what to do. And 
like I said, I want the audience to be satisfied. Mm. So that's the biggest thing I've learned is like, you have to do your own thing. That's how I learned. Right. Um, shout out to Diallo Riddle and Bashir Salahuddin. Um, I don't see them that often now, but back when I was working with them, working with them every day, they're, they're writers and actors. Um, that was one of the biggest things I saw from them. You know, you, you have to kind of create your own world. Right. Otherwise, you're dreaming. And hopefully, right. you get a part. Yeah. But for me, it was like, I have to, I have to figure out what people want to see versus my own natural talent and then build upon that and make that happen yourself. And it's hard. It's so hard. Yeah. But the finishing product, man. It's always fantastic. Yeah, because it was you who did it. Yeah. And everything is blamed on you. Right. Which is the good stuff or the bad stuff. Right. It doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's, it, right. it's either or. But yeah, I would say that's, that's the biggest thing. Own your own stuff. Okay. Work on being, uh, you know, a Dame Dash <laughs> no, or Jay Z. Yeah, what's going on? What? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm saying. I mean, also, Dame's Dame's not not doing. Dame has his own. Bad now. Uh, he's, yeah, he's, no. He's, Have you seen Dame Dash at a McDonald's? <laughs> has he rung you up? Hell no, because he's doing his own thing. Right. Just because he's not as rich as Jay Z does not mean he's not an owner. That's true. That, that's why I said I can listen to everybody, man. I can listen to Dame Dash and pull out the good stuff and pull out the bad stuff. Right. That's all it is. It, right. You know, it's a balance. Yeah. What uh? What is your biggest piece of advice for brand new people that are trying to either break into this business, break into this industry, or you know just comedy? Mm, figure out what you really want and then attack. Um, you know, there are people that say they want to do this. What they really are saying is that they want somebody to pick them from obscurity and give them their own show, right. and then they want to lay back and they want to buy a huge house and they want to sip champagne. Like, there's a lot of other opportunities out there. Where do you actually fit right. in the real? Ah, oh, man, I wish, I wish I could look up something right now. There was somebody that put up something recently that was like, it was something about you know. I'm not going to do it as, as 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 eloquently, but it was like, are you dreaming or is this reality? What you want to do, is that a dream or is that reality? Can right. you really make that happen or can you not? So I would say figure out where you actually fit in. Mm. Just because you came out here and you wanted to be Will Smith does not mean you are going to be Will Smith. Right. Maybe you'll be Jerry Bruckheimer. Right. Maybe you'll be a script supervisor. Right. Maybe you'll be a grip. Find out what you can actually do on a daily basis. Yeah because it takes that work. I mean, I, I know it sounds weird, but it's like, you have to do this stuff every day. Do, do, do we not understand out here that this is a lottery for uh, the top guys? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Tom Cruise, is that gonna ever happen again? Denzel Washington, is that ever gonna happen again? No, right. you have to make it the way you're gonna make it. Right. So I would figure out, as you're moving through this thing, try different jobs, try different stuff out, and figure out where you can actually work it out if yeah. you really want to work it out some people do not i would actually say most people do not that's most people true. come out here and they say they want to do something and you tell them what to do and they look at you with their glossy yeah right okay they, yeah, yeah 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 and then they go home and oh, that, that dude was hilarious like what 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 do you actually want to do right. and and uh i would say you have to attack it that way i'm sure that's broad but it's like there's a lot of people who think they want to do something and they don't. Right. Once they really get a taste of it, they're like, okay, yeah, yeah. This, this isn't for, for me. Yeah. Like, I mean, ask an actor that you meet t t tomorrow that just jumped off the bus. Hey, yeah. what you want to do? I want to act. Okay, what was the last thing you acted in? Oh, I ain't never tried. Right, right. Why have you never tried? Are you taking classes? What were you doing yesterday? Medicine? Right. Not even classes. Do it. Yeah. Get a camera. There's, Rent a yeah. camera. Yeah. Go on Craigslist and ask somebody, hey, you have a camera? Do you want to work together? Do you want to do this? I mean, that's that's what it takes. That it's, it's, it's groundwork. It's all groundwork. Right. I mean, if if you really want to do it, then you can do it. There's, there's no excuse. You know, yes. you're the only person keeping you from doing it is yourself. Most people say they want to be comedians and they don't want to get on stage often enough. I mean, that's a hard... First of all, why would you even want to be a comedian? Like, that's one of the hardest things you could do, period. Yeah. I'm a comedian because I have to be, and I don't even know if I'm gonna get, if, if if I'm gonna be the most successful comedian ever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it's because I have to. I have to share my thoughts with the audience yeah. on damn near a daily basis. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Like that is that's where the heart is. That's why I say in the last year it's been rough for me to even do stand up, because now my focus is on my goddamn kid. Right. So now I'm thinking more. What I, I've, I've never stopped thinking. I've never stopped thinking about acting and writing. I'm all, I'm always writing. I'm always doing my own stuff, and that is where my happiness lies. Like. If, if, if I don't become Will Smith or, you know, uh, Spike Lee, yeah, yeah, I, I'm okay with that. Right. It's just that daily grind, that daily work. I'm okay with the work I've done so far, and I'm going to keep doing it. Like, that's, right. that's it. So now, where can people see your work? Uh, you can go to my website at thomasafraser.com, F-R-A-S-E-R. I have a YouTube channel. I'm on Instagram. I haven't been Snapchatting lately. People who follow me on Snapchat, I apologize. Uh, I like to see my child. <laughs> uh, but I, I put them on there mostly. But yeah, my, my website, YouTube channel, those are the two top spots where you can see my work. And, and you know, Perfect. hopefully you laugh and you pass it around. That's, that's all I hope. Show's coming up? Show's coming up? No. <laughs> No, I'm actually right now working. Uh, this is actually what's taking most of my time uh, outside of my kid is uh, I'm working on putting on a YouTube channel because I heard I heard a veteran comedian say this, you know, he and he wouldn't say this too many times, but it's like, I wish I could record my set I did that was great this night and just pass around America mm -hmm. and I don't have to go across America and keep doing it. I can't travel that much. Like I, I'm an LA comic, which right. if anybody knows what that is, it's, it's hard to build a name by just being LA comic because there's, there's so many of us here. Right. So for me, I'm working on writing, uh, producing, directing, putting more things on film so I can go that route. I don't think I'll ever really stop stand up, com stand up comedy, but my actual work ethic is going more in writing, acting, and trying to put something together so I can get a house I feel you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know when I'm gonna die, man. I could die walking out of here. Okay? I mean, let's not say that. No, but. no, I'm just saying. But yeah, that's that's my focus now is having a because a lot of comedians, they don't die great, man. People don't talk about it. They don't die with health insurance, bro. Right. They You're don't right. die with any money. You know what I'm saying? Right. What's wrong with having a couple dollars in your pocket? I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's, what's I was, wrong? I was, I was, I was trying to end this on like a nice note, and then you, you start talking. Listen, 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 <laughs> listen. Start listen. talking about diet. I talk real, man. It's, 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 <laughs> look, you you're still laughing? You t you're talking about diet? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> because it's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. But listen, nah, man. it's not terrible, man. I, I love life. Thank you, thank you. Thank Appreciate you, me, you coming through again. You guys can check out Thomas Frazier on his website, on his Instagram. ThomasAFraser.com. Come join us. Everywhere. Find him, Google him, because someone else comes up. But if you put Thomas Frazier com comedian in Google, then he's, yes, the, he's, the, he's the first one. All I ask is that if you find a video you like, share it. That's it. There you go. There you go. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Of course, you can find me all over the internet at the Nick Purdue. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram it at KingXO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host owner and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.